That's the first movement of Dondrieu's uh, Magnificat in the first mode, one of the great court composers uh, to the French monarchy. This is one of the pieces we'll be playing in our next of our organ and heritage recitals here at the Dome of Home, the Shrine Church of Saints Peter and Paul and St. Philomena in New Brighton. Uh, coming on the 27th of March, two days after the Great Feast of the Annunciation, we're going to be focusing on how the plain chant and organ music down the centuries have interwoven uh, directly to shape not only the Roman liturgy but also the Reformed Lutheran liturgies. Uh, over that time. We're going to be joined by the Sister Adorers of the Institute of Christ the King, uh, who will be put, wrapping the plain chant around all of these works, uh, and we'll see in works like the Dondria, but also looking at the great hymn Ave Maris Stella for Our Lady, how in the Roman Church in the 17th and 18th centuries it was really very common for the organ to replace the voices, that the plain song and the organ acted antiphonally, they spoke to one another during the liturgy. That changed, of course, particularly in continental Europe, northern Europe with the Reformed churches, but that legacy of the importance of plain song goes all the way through. Certain modes, the tonus peregrinus, the unusual ninth mode of the of Gregorian chant, became adopted by the Lutherans as their melody for the Magnificat, for their, not their melody for the My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord, the great hymn of Mary herself. And we'll explore that through a variety of chorale preludes by composers such as Johann Pachelbel and Johann Sebastian Bach himself. And we'll be concluding with a fantastic work by Dietrich Buxtehude, one of his greatest, uh, his, his own set uh, of variations on the Magnificat in the first mode. We're coming to the end of this, this set of 10 recitals over the year, designed to show you how this building, the liturgy which goes on in it, and the organ music which wraps around that have evolved over the centuries, always the music and the liturgy in harmony. After this recital in April, we'll celebrate the great feast of Easter and look at music for that great occasion. In May, we'll celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, and our recital then will be focusing on music uh, from that great feast. And we'll finish the year in June uh, with music less connected to the Roman Church, but absolutely important for our great composers like Buxtehude and Bach, uh, with some of the great Lutheran hymn tunes which have passed their ways down uh, over the centuries. So please do come and join us if you can. Uh, leave your comments here below in this video. All of the recitals are on our YouTube channel, so do please feel free to go back over those. And the program notes for each of those are also available uh, below each of the videos and on the Dome of Home website where you can find out more information. But for now, I hope to see you with the next recital, and I'm going to leave you with the first movement uh, of what will be the final work, Buxtehude's great Magnificat Primitone.